Welcome to Teacher and Zion Podcast. My guest today is Stephen Horn. Hi, Stephen. It's good Hi. to talk to you again. It's good to talk to you, too. Uh, we've both been very busy, I think, since the gathering in June when I saw you last. Um, how are you doing, my friend? Oh, we're doing good. Uh, gathering in June just, I don't know, revived my soul. It really did. <laughs> it's a great you know, You've got to do... You've got to do a little travel too recently. It looks like so. Yeah, that's been neat watching your adventures. Yeah. Um, uh, we originally spoke about doing this back at the beginning of July, I believe. Yes. Um, but our schedules just hadn't lined up. Uh, so we decided to do it after I released an episode called "Eleven Eleven: The Last Great Awakening," and as I recall. You were quite excited about that video because you had, in the past, received a great deal of understanding on the topic of Ephraim and their prophetic role and the restoration of the House of Israel. Um, but no one seemed to, no one seemed overly interested in hearing about it. Perhaps over the years. Um, yeah. And so I think maybe it was one of those situations where you finally find someone else who understands something that has been revealed to you. And it's kind of nice to find out you aren't crazy after all. Is that, yeah. am I? Well, honestly, when, when I first got this message, it was literally a download from the spirit of, a, of an idea. And I had, mm -hmm. and I was yeah. like, are, I was like, God, are you kidding me? I mean, like, what, what, yeah. what? And 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 he told me he told me go specifically turn to this passage in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and read it. And he explained it to me. Spirit just explained yeah. to me. Uh, okay, you think it means this, but look at it closely. It means this, 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 this. And then after that, I I ran into a book, uh, uh, Judas Scepter and Joseph's Birthright. Oh yeah. This, yeah. this was well, like this was like about six months or a year later, right? And and yeah. okay, and here was stuff laying out things God had been trying to explain to mm -hmm. me. And and then more stuff came to me over the years, you know, yeah. and then I yeah. really got it. I went back and I read mm -hmm. all the Old Testament prophets with oh, this yeah. new understanding. And it's like I was wowed. I mean it, it, mm -hmm. everything took on this whole new meaning that was just Yes. Amazing. And I was like, wow. Yeah. And sometimes when I've tried to explain this to people, there's such a blinders on their mind mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So that's why we're going to go and we're going to start off at the beginning and we're yeah. going to carefully build why this yeah. is true. Because if you really look carefully at the scripture, if this is extremely obvious once you see it. Yeah. <laughs> It's very, this, very this obvious. Is, this is a mystery, in a sense. It is hidden from the world. Yes. It's one of those things that the Lord is going to reveal that will cause people to uh, basically have their mouths drop open and, and, ha and consider that which they've never considered before. Yes. Um, so, interestingly enough, I just did a podcast not too long ago on my cult experience where I accidentally joined a cult and had a two-year experience with that and what's interesting that I never told about that is on my way out of there I'm still trying to figure out what part of that was real or not or was any of all of it was wrong and so I was very much open to correction and the the Lord started sharing with me and one of the things that he basically said was the entire ideas that this cult put forward no matter how grandiose it was was very small-minded <laughs> and that what he what he was doing was so much bigger and oh, that's yeah. when he began to inf that's when he began to unfold the the plan of the restoration of the house of israel and and boy when that that i started to get a hold of that it's like it changed everything and i realized and that's why i wrote my first book the um about ephraim because the whole point of it was and this is before i even you know had communicated with anyone from the lds about this um but the whole idea of it was i realized the rlds people were trying to save their church they were trying to rebuild it or bring it back and they're all about trying to fix this institutional church and what i realized was when the lord showed this to me is that was very small-minded that what he is doing and what he did with joseph smith and bringing forth the book of mormon was all about this very topic we're going to talk about and, and it's, it's part a, it's of this a, vast big 
historical yeah. picture of what's been happening that's just mm -hmm. uh, just uh, this it's like you it's like you step up and you see this overview of history yeah. like i've never seen it before this, and, and it opens see, the scriptures yeah and it opens see, the scriptures up to you yeah and you see god's hand has been moving in the nations for a long time mm. to bring about his yeah. purposes amen I also want to state that it's also perfectly fine to have disagreements, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. we only we we only sin when we allow contention to enter in or we allow these kinds of things to divide us. When, so to my understanding, my understanding, the only thing that we must all absolutely positively agree on is the doctrine and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And anything else outside of that, we're free to hold our own opinions and as long as we discuss them in love. But I think this, when people get a hold of it, when they have an opportunity to hear what it is, it is a good news. It is very exciting. It is what the Book of Mormon talks about, which is the fulfilling of his covenants to his people Israel. And it's, so let's get into it. To another uh, uh, YouTube broadcast day with somebody, and they had a list of things that were common things that people believed in churches. And then they were saying, okay, well, what does the scripture really teach? And it was like, uh, by this shall men know that ye are my disciples because you have the correct doctrinal understanding of, of the, <laughs> go the gospel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So it's not about that we all are going to agree on yeah. the doctrine, but we need to yeah. love each other. And we need to be sure. patient and understanding and realize that we are coming from different places and, and speak in with love and respect to one another. And by this, so men Absolutely. know that we are the Lord's disciples yeah. <laughs> yep. because we have love for one another. <laughs> we don't always see eye to eye. And, you know, that's part of the glorious part of it. Because yes, it is. If we don't, we don't see eye to eye, but we can still appreciate and respect one another. Um, to me, that's what that's what the kingdom is about. And then he'll, he will he will bring us into that unity in time if we will just let his love bond us together. So, right. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, you got a presentation. Yeah, um, I'll let you, I'll let you take it from here and I'll go on the ride with you. Right. So what we're going to talk about is a very important key to understanding biblical prophecy, particularly the Old Testament prophecy. Um, and it, we, we've kind of touched on this, but I really would like to make this clear in any presentation I do like this. You know, I encourage people to study and pray and seek the truth of these things for themselves. And if something we say offends you, um, uh, reject it. You don't, you don't need to accept, accept what, what I say, what uh, Doug says or whatever, uh, unless you've, you know, pondered and prayed about it and, and you, uh, the spirit is revealed to it. It's true. And I'm perfectly okay, especially in the comments when we put this on YouTube. People want to disagree. That's fine. Just disagree respectfully and, and, and explain mm -hmm. why you disagree. And we can talk about it and have a polite conversation about it. I'm perfectly willing to have Amen. a polite conversation about anything. I, mm -hmm. But I don't like it when we resort to name calling and belittling and, you know, that because that's really an ego trip. Yeah. Now. I because you know both of us come from you know uh, Book of Mormon believing background. Mm -hmm. you, you are LDS, me LDS. I, I want to start out with this thing from Nephi about when he's prophesying about the Bible. He says, "The book that thou beholdest is a record of the Jews, which contains the covenants of the Lord which he hath made with the house of Israel, and it also containeth many of the prophecies of the holy prophets." And then he goes on to say that it's not as many as on the plates of brass but they contain the covenants of the Lord, which he had made to the house of Israel, wherefore they are of great worth unto the Gentiles. Why is knowing the covenants that God has made with the house of Israel of great worth to us, the Gentiles? That's, That's the question. question. That's the question we're going to be exploring yeah. in this presentation. So why, why do we, if we're Gentiles, need to understand the covenants God made with mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. So we're going to start off with part one. We're going to look at those covenants that are talked about in the Bible that God made with the house of Israel. And well, it goes clear back actually to Noah and his vineyard when Noah drank too much wine, got drunk. And uh, mm -hmm. as, as the kind of, uh, uh, not just the Bible, but some other sources suggest that, that uh, 
uh, his son Ham stole the garment that he was wearing that had been passed down from Adam in the garden of Edom and his other brethren uh, heard of his nakedness and went in and with, walked in backwards and covered their father's nakedness up. And when Noah awoke, he said, Cursed be Canaan, Ham's son, a servant of servants, shall you be to his brethren. And blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And that's where the lineage that uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob descended from. That's the Semitic peoples. Mm -hmm. And then it's interesting, he said, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Now, the way I understand this, this is foreshadowing the idea that the descendants of Japheth would would be adopted into the house of Israel. They would dwell in the tents of the descendants of Shem. And it, where it says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles done from Japheth. And I really believe that that was the Oriental people. Because if you look at the mm -hmm. bulk of the yeah. world's population, the yeah. Oriental people are greatly enlarged you know mm -hmm. they they in if you look at india and china uh, what is it yeah. uh two-thirds of the world's population okay mm -hmm. but we're talking about of course with abraham as a descendant of shem and so god made a covenant with abraham and he said he would make him a great nation and he would make his name great and he would uh and that he would be a blessing in other words he'd be a blessing to other people he would bless those that blessed him and curse those that cursed him. And in thee, and this is a real important thing, in thee, in other words, in, in your descendants, all of the families of the earth would be blessed. Yeah. And he said he would multiply him as the stars of heaven or the sands of the sea. In other words, that's a, that's a huge that's amount a of descendants, <laughs> okay? Yes. And that they would possess the gates of their enemies. In other words, they, they would have power over their enemies and uh, that you know they would bless all nations of the earth. So one of the things that's really important to understand is God swore this by himself, yeah. that he would do this. This was not conditioned on the faithfulness of Abraham's descendants. This was a promise or a covenant God made with Abraham that was unconditional. I am going to do this, mm. okay? and. Yeah, when when the children of Israel strayed, of course they had problems, and and but but that didn't keep them from so that they would be distorted from fulfilling God's yeah. word. God God planned on doing this. I, I have yes. kind of wondered why God did this with Abraham. But one of the things you see about Abraham he was he was kind. Yes, he was considerate of other people. Even when you see that he he was arguing with God about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he was not yeah. uh, a hate monger. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's rain judgment down on those evil people in Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah. We ate them. Well, you know, it was like, well, God, you know, if we can just find this many righteous people, can we spare them? He was that, an intercessor. He was an intercessor. Yeah. And he yeah. had the heart of God, which is to, to save people, to rescue yeah. people, to, to, to be righteous. And I think that that's an important reason why. And then Isaac, of course, then received that birthright present. He said, I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And he reiterated he would make him numerous uh, seed uh, and give all these countries, these you know uh, lands in the area around him. And again, that their seed would bless all nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. And of course, then Ishmael was the other son that uh, Abraham had that became some of the Arab people and the conflict between the descendants yes. of Isaac and the descendants yeah. of uh, uh, Ishmael continues to this day. Yes, and then yeah. it continued on to Jacob. Um, God shall give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. So there he's promising mm -hmm. them material blessings, yeah. that they will be wealthy, that his descendants will be wealthy and other people will bow down and serve them. So in other words, their descendants other people would, uh, they, they would uh, be subjected by the descendants of Jacob. Yeah. And let uh, thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be everyone that blesses thee. So again, that's an interesting thing that, you know, those who bless Israel mm -hmm. will be blessed. 
those who curse Israel are, are, will be cursed. So, of course, Jacob was the younger of Isaac's son. The elder was Esau. Yeah. And again, there again, you have the conflict between Esau and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, uh, Jacob mm -hmm. uh, that still continues to this day yes. <laughs> in the Middle East. Yep. The animosity there. And that's one of the things I've learned about this, that the character of the descendants, they carry somewhat of the of yeah. the energy or the spirit of their forefathers. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. Now, yeah. of course, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And he said that he would make a, a nation, one nation, and a company of nations come out of his loins. That's very important promise to remember. There would be a nation and a group of nations that would arise out of his loins and he would give him the land which he gave to Abraham and Isaac and uh, and so forth. So again, this is the, the lineage of the birthright and you see that there's some clarification of these promises that are made in every step. So yeah. there were 12 sons of Israel. This is, this is something that's obvious in the Bible, okay, but Today, most people act like there's only one tribe of Israel, that, that the descendants of Judah, who are known as the Jews, are the only Israelites. But the descendants of all of these sons are Israelites. They're, they're Interest, interestingly enough, uh, when they were considering the name of the nation of Israel, uh, when it was being formed, uh, talking about in the 1940s. Uh -huh. Originally, uh, they had be, looked like they were going to settle on the name New Judea as their name because recognizing the fact that they were not fully Israel because of the, the lost tribes that were still lost. Um, in the end, I think uh, something something transpired and they decided to go with Israel instead. And uh, they even wrote into uh, the document that in hopes that one day they would all be reunited, reunited again, they would adopt the name Israel. But originally it was to be called New Judea. And in fact, there was a newspaper or a, a magazine, all of Europe and so forth, that was about Zionism and, and bringing the Jews back together to be gathered again. And it was called New Judea. So I just wanted to share that little bit yeah, of history. That's a, that's a good tidbit, too, to add to this. Now, this is the key that most people miss. The birthright did not go to Judah. Okay? So yeah. the birthright went through Joseph to his sons Ephraim and Manasseh, who Jacob adopted as his own sons. So they were half Egyptian, so he adopted them as his own sons, made them... Uh, two tribes of Israel. So Joseph got a double portion. Instead yeah. of having one tribe in Israel, he had two. And Reuben was sort of dispossessed of the birthright as the eldest son of the, the first wife. That means that the unconditional promises we just went through that were made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were to be fulfilled through Joseph and his descendants. Yes. not through Judah and his descendants. Now, I, where, where I have trouble understanding people who want to argue about this is the idea, you know, that because the, the people of the, that were descended of these tribes eventually sinned and were dispossessed of their lands and scattered, that that means that, you know, okay, God's plan is basically wrecked. But, mm. but I don't like that idea because it's saying, Number one, God is a liar. He said, I would do this, and now he's not going to do this because yeah. he changed his mind because of, of people. And I don't think God changes his mind. And I don't think mm -hmm. God, when he sets out to do something, uh, can be thwarted by the will of men. That's right. I think God, God made these promises, and he intended to fulfill them. And therefore, if we're going to look for the fulfillment of these promises, we have to look in the world and see what people match the blessings that were given to Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay? Yep. So th that's, I think that's a real important thing to continue going forward. So, so
so he says, God Almighty appeared to me and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make thee a multitude of people, and I will give this land to thy seed after them for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. The angel, this is again a really important key. The angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them. So mm -hmm. Israel is saying that the name of Israel yes. would be named on the descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh. That's right. They would carry the name Israel. And that is really critical to understand for Old Testament prophecy. Absolutely. Because if the name of Israel went to the descendants of Joseph, when Old Testament prophesiers are prophesying of Israel, who mm -hmm. are they talking about? Yes. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> and they're, so, talking, they're talking about Joseph and, and the tribes that were with him. And tribes that were with him. Yeah. yeah. So, As also... A <laughs> also, he set Ephraim before Manasseh. He gave them both mm -hmm. the pro he gave both the promise, but he yeah. basically said Ephraim will be first and Manasseh will be second. The youngest son again. Yeah, it's a pattern. <laughs> right, it is a pattern. So, when of course, uh, as is typically the case in all these things, the, the father Joseph protested and, and Jacob said, "Nope, sorry, it's this way." Uh, mm -hmm. Manasseh will be great, but Ephraim will be even greater. Yes. Okay. And thy seed shall become a multitude of nations. Now, that's another key. Mm -hmm. a, a multitude of nations would arise from yes. the lineage of Joseph. Not so if these are fulfilled, then there are a multitude of nations in the modern earth mm -hmm. that are primarily populated by the descendants of Joseph and the tribes that went with Joseph that are known yeah. as the lost tribes. Yeah. And he also says that Ephraim is the firstborn. So Ephraim is the one that carried the birthright. Yes. So let's review those blessings. Multiplied, numerous descendants. Can't be a small group of people isolated somewhere. Has to be a big group of people yeah. in the earth. Okay, large populations. There has to be a nation and mm -hmm. also a company or group of nations that are descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh, all right? Um, these nations have to be powerful military, militaristically because they have power over their enemies and mm -hmm. they possess the gates of their enemies, meaning yeah. strategic locations that control the movement of things on the earth. Yes. Also, they have to have been a blessing Mm -hmm. to all of the other nations of the earth, right? Yep. So, so we have to look for people that match this identity because, because those are the promises God made to those descendants. Therefore, mm -hmm. either God was a liar or he changed his mind or this has been fulfilled and we're just not seeing it, right? So here's another interesting thing. When Jacob gathered his sons, he says, gather together and I'll tell you what will follow you in the last day, in, in the latter day. So in other words, in, 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 in the big picture as everything unfolded, I'm going to tell you, all of you 12 sons, where you'll be. I'm going to make a prophecy about all of you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this is in Genesis. And Judah got the promise that the Messiah would come through his lineage. Actually, a, yep. a reign of kings would come through his lineage yep. and ultimately the Messiah. So, and he was also called a lion. And he started off by saying that you're the one that your brethren will praise. Okay, why? Because if the Messiah came through Judah, yep. we're gonna praise, we're gonna praise Judah and the mm -hmm. lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So he says, you're a baby lion. A lion's mm -hmm. whelp. And then from the prey, the ba what the baby lion has caught, you're going to go up. And then as an old lion, you're going to crouch down. And who will rouse you up? Okay. You won't, you won't be able to, to be, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, to have power over your enemies. They won't be able to intimidate you anymore. Of mm -hmm. when you're an old lion. 
So the scepter, the right to rule, will not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet, until, until Shiloh, Shiloh mm -hmm. come. And to him, Shiloh, will the people be gathered. Yes. So there you have the foreshadowing of the promise of the Messiah, who the people would gather to Christ, the yes. Messiah. Now, this is the one we want to talk about because I think this is the it's really interesting. Joseph is a fruitful bough. So again, Joseph is going to have a lot of descendants, okay? Yes. Even a fruitful bough by a well. So a well is where you have water, so you can, you know, have a, mm -hmm. you can grow really big. Uh, whose branches run over the wall, suggesting that they, they branch out from the land that they're, of their first inheritance mm -hmm. and are planted elsewhere. Yes. They, they carry over. The archers have sorely grieved him. The enemies have grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow bowed in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong. So in other words, he would be victorious. He would have power. Even though his enemies would hate him, they would come mm -hmm. against him. He would have power to defeat the enemies because of the hands of the mighty God of Jacob from which would come the shepherd the cornerstone of Israel, again, referencing the Messiah, right? Yes, that's right. Even the God of thy father, okay, who shall help thee and the Almighty who shall bless thee. And then he's listed with blessings of heaven above. So I, I think that refers to spiritual blessings, mm -hmm. inspiration, knowledge, revelation, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb, I, I, minerals, <laughs> prosperity, wealth, yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. Now, this is the interesting part. And this was something that God had to kind of like open my mind to see. He says, the blessings of thy father. Now, who is Joseph's father? Joseph's father is Israel. Israel. So, the, so my blessing, he's saying, my blessing has prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Yes. In other words, I, God gave me a greater blessing than he gave Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. And that blessing extended to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. Okay? Yes. And that blessing, that extra blessing that God promised me, will be extended to Joseph. That's right. It will be on his head on the one who got separated from his brethren. Now, you know, uh, just to pause for a moment here. Yeah. You look at these amazing prophecies, which the whole world has, right? Right. Christianity has it. Jews have this. And you look at these tremendous promises. And yet, is Joseph ever mentioned? Except as just a, an aside, a little story, uh, something we can learn some lessons from. And yet, where is he? No one seems to know. Right. Um He's missing from the picture, and yet we have all these tremendous blessings that took that what he has, uh, I think, not only spiritual, but even physical blessings. Yes. Uh, they uh, are beyond all measure. And yes, sir. So we they're, should see that somewhere, but yes. nobody talks about that. Nobody talks uh, yeah. about that. <laughs> but I, I, think, I think some people kind of spiritually get it, but, but they don't fully that they don't make that extra leap of connecting it to the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. So Joseph's seed would be so numerous, they would run over the wall, so they would depart to other lands. They would have enemies, but they would prevail above them with God's help. They would receive both spiritual and material blessings. Um, and Jacob gave Israel a blessing that extended to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills that, was, that, that he had been promised that Abraham and Isaac were not promised. And there is a hint that Joseph's descendants would be separated from their brethren. Also, Moses gave a similar blessing. Uh, again, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but basically it's that, again, that their Joseph was gonna be very wealthy, have all these blessings, all this material you know, wealth, the precious things of the earth, you know, and so forth. And then there's this interesting, his glory is the firstling of his bullock. So as the lion is associated with Judah, 
the bull mm -hmm. or the unicorn are associated with Joseph. Yes. Okay, so we recognize the lion of the tree of Juba. Where is the bull and unicorn of Ephraim, of, of descendants yeah. of Joseph? And with those horns, he will push the people together from the ends of the earth. Ten thousands of Ephraim, so the Ephraimites would be more plentiful, again, mm -hmm. like God said, yeah. than the ones of Manasseh. As a little aside note, my, my dad told me once that according to my great great grandfather Joseph Horn. Joseph Smith said, you are part of the horns of Ephraim that will push the people. <laughs> so there, my family name, which is English, you know, mm, horns of yeah. Ephraim. I thought that yep. was kind of funny aside. So part two, there are all the promises. There are the covenants God made with the house of Israel which would be of great worth to us as Gentiles. So yes. now let's look at a brief historical review. So we know that the children of Israel were taken down and became slaves in Egypt. They were down there for 400 years. Then they were delivered, yep. brought out to the, to the promised land. Moses gave them a system of laws called the reign of the judges, where the law was their ruler, not a king. Yep. So they were all equal before the law, okay? So they had a law, a system of law in which everyone, in which the law was the ruler and the, and everybody rule was Rule of law called, rather than a king. Yeah, the rule of the law rather than the king. Um, eventually the people got tired of that and they decided they wanted a king. And God said, of you don't really want to do this. This is, you know, gave a lot of warnings about all the bad things that would happen, but they mm -hmm. did it anyway. And of course they got King Saul who did all the things that Samuel said he would. And that mm -hmm. was followed by David, yep. who also, even though he was a good man in many ways, he still had the problems that when you get power, you're tempted to misuse it. And so did Solomon, yeah. but they ruled over a united Israel and became great empire, uh, according mm -hmm. to the Bible. And then David was the, uh, his, his lineage produced a lineage of kings of which eventually came Christ, okay? which was the fulfillment of the promise made to the tribe of Judah. Okay? Yes. So, uh, after Solomon died, the, because of Solomon's iniquities and because his son wanted to tax the people even heavier, there was a civil war. The, the nation tax split... Tax revolt. Tax revolt. They split into two. And the um, yeah. ten and a half tribes basically went with the northern kingdom, which was led by who? An Ephraimite, yes. okay? And became yep. known as Ephraim or Israel. Oh, I believe yeah. that was Jeroboam. Yeah, and so the um, southern kingdom consisted primarily of Judah, although there were, you know, there were some other you know, ones mixed in there, but, but, uh, mm -hmm. But basically, most of the tribes went with the northern kingdom, and their capital was Samaria. You ever heard of the Samaritans? That mm -hmm. comes from the, ca the capital of the northern That's right. city of uh, Samaria. So um, yep. this, is, this is the beginning of this key that yep, we understand. I realize that mm -hmm. every Old Testament prophet, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, all of them prophesied after the Civil War. So do you think yeah. they did not know the difference between Judah and Israel? Absolutely. And when you read the prophecies in there, they prophesy to Israel and then they prophesy to Judah separately. Yes. You'll see that over once once my eyes were open to that I was like I never understood this before. I know. Neither did and I. And you know and not to spoil anything. I'm not going to jump ahead here, but just just as a a little hint to pay attention to uh I I realized when God was showing me who and where Ephraim is that there was a clue in all this and that in their all through their history they've had a problem with taxes. And <laughs> have, having <laughs> I hadn't and, thought of that one. <laughs> and, 
and revolt against the king because of the heavy taxes. And I thought that is too much, but you know, it's, it's, it's almost too much on the nose. <laughs> it's almost like, how do we not know or see that? But anyway, we'll go on. Oh yeah, we'll go on. So, so this is the, this is the thing that we're, we're talking about, a vital key to understanding Old Testament prophecy. We have to understand that when they were prophesying of Israel, they were not prophesying of Judah. They were not foretelling the history of the Jews. They were foretelling the history of the people who had been part of the northern kingdom of Israel, who we know of as the lost 10 tribes. And these people, yep. like I said, were known primarily as, as Israel, Ephraim, or by their capital, Samaria, whereas they were referred to as Judah and Jerusalem by the prophets in the southern kingdom. All right. right. So there are really two families of Israel. The, the Judah's birthright was the ruling lineage, the, the political power and the Messiah, and Joseph's was the birthright blessings. And so the, the, we know who the descendants of Judah are, and the question we're trying to look at is, where are the descendants of Joseph? Where are the people yeah. who have fulfilled these promises God made what happened with the descendants of Joseph? Yeah. Okay, so eventually the Northern Kingdom was conquered by Assyria. Now, what's interesting, and I got this from some books by Stephen Collins, he pointed out mm -hmm. that it only lists, I think, three or four tribes that went into captivity to the Assyrians. So, and he suggests in his book that a lot of the other tribes recognizing the problems that were happening in their Northern Kingdom had already dispersed. Yeah. They, they already had gone to other lands mm -hmm. before the Assyrians took them captive. Uh, and eventually, of course, the southern kingdom was conquered by Babylon. Yeah. The Jews eventually returned from their captivity in Babylon to Jerusalem. And then they were finally scattered again by the Roman Empire mm -hmm. um, in 70 AD. So actually, there are 13 tribes. Yes. Because Joseph got a double portion. So even though they talk about the 12 tribes, there were actually... 13 sons of Israel because mm -hmm. uh, he, he adopted uh, Joseph's son. Manasseh being the 13th tribe. And this, yeah. that's, that is a real important little clue too that we're gonna talk mm -hmm. about later. Yeah. Um, and again, the Jews did not inherit the birthright promises. So uh, either the, the covenants weren't fulfilled or we just don't recognize where they, how they've been fulfilled. Yeah. Now. This scripture kind of hints that God divorced Israel because because the Old Testament has this metaphor of like uh, Israel is God's bride and she's unfaithful. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. he divorces her because she goes off and serves other gods, you know, cheats on her husband. Um, and so uh, he says, you know, when Isaiah your iniquities, you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions, your mother was put away. So, um, yeah. you know, he, he gave them a bill of divorcement. So, son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Wherefore, I poured out my fury upon them, them for the blood they had shed in the land and for the idols wherewith they had polluted. And one of the reasons why I want to mention when we think of idol worship, we tend to think of someone bowing down before a statue. But if you yeah. actually look at the worship of Baal and everything else, it, it, it involved yeah, it's... very like like sacrificing children, you know, yeah. to, to burn them alive and blow. So so this was not just a you know some yeah. little no. pagan thing. This no. was really evil stuff that these people were mm. doing that was was you know harming children. Is a, God doesn't like that very much at all. Um, yeah. So he scattered them among the uh, heathen, dispersed them among the nations according to their ways. I judge them. So Judah was dispersed. Yeah. Okay. Meaning they they were scattered among the nations, but they retained the memory of who they mm -hmm. are. But but yeah. Joseph and the other house of Israel were scattered among the nations and blended in yeah. with those nations and lost their identity. Yeah. It's not that they no longer existed. They just no longer remembered who they were. Yeah, absolutely. 
They became Gentiles. And that was one of the problems with the Samaritans and why the Jews uh, saw them as being, being unclean. Because they intermarried with Gentiles. Their children were mixed, you know, yeah. between Gentile and Israelite blood. And so they saw them as Gentiles. They treated them as such. Yeah, exactly. So God did not forget divorced Israel. This, this is also really clear in the scriptures. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from afar. So he's yeah. addressing people who are living on islands, who are far away from the land of Israel. Okay. He's talking, he's talking to the dispersed tribes. The, yes, the scattered he is. Tribes. Yeah. And then he says, Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me. He divorced me. He kicked me out. He's forgotten me. Okay. And then he says this. Can a woman forget her suckling child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? She, in other words, a woman might forget a child that she born and, and nursed, but I won't forget you. Okay, yeah. it's, 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 in other words, it's, it's possible that you could have a woman that was so, to, that she'd forget, but I won't. For thou Thank shalt you, forget the shame of thy youth mm -hmm. and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his own name, and the redeemer of the house of Israel. Who is the redeemer of the house of Israel? Christ. Yeah. Your husband Israel is the redeemer of the house of Israel the the Messiah Jesus Christ the God of the whole earth shall he be called okay yeah I haven't forgotten you I know who you are and 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 you you I still remember you that's really powerful stuff and, it, and that's why that's why he told his disciples and he couldn't tell them everything but he said other sheep I have and then when he appeared to the Nephites, he said, hey, I told them other sheep I had, but I couldn't tell them everything. What's interesting is that after he tells the Nephites this, he then says, and other sheep I have other than you. But he doesn't tell them. <laughs> exactly. And they don't ask either. I think that's a trend. <laughs> now, now, this is, this is also really, really good here. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. In other words, that was the divorce. Okay? Yeah. Yet, even though I've said that, even though mm -hmm. I'm no longer your God, and you're no longer my people, yet, in spite of that, the children of Israel should be as the sand of the sea. In other words, I yeah. will continue to fulfill the promise I made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. You're still going to become a numerous people, mm -hmm. okay? But then, when you become a numerous people, okay, in place of where it said, you are not my people. He will tell them instead, you are the sons of the living mm -hmm. God. Now, what, is that, what does that sound like? Yeah. Doesn't that sound very New Testament? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that when we accept Christ, we're born mm -hmm. again as the sons of the living That's God. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, I will. Um, and then he goes on and says, Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear, for more of the, are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. In other words, there's the, the married wife is Judah. Yes. Okay. Judah's remained the, the faithful to the Lord, mm -hmm. but, the, but there are more children of the desolate, of the Israel. divorced wife, Israel, than there are of the married wife, Judah. Yeah. So he says, enlarge the place of thy tent, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Mm -hmm. In other words, you'll, you'll continue to be multiplied in spite of it. And then he says, I'll, rem I'll marry you again. Yeah. The Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou hast refused, saith Lord. For a small moment have I forgotten thee, but with great mm -hmm. mercies shall I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee. Yes. I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to mm. her. And I will betroth her unto me forever. And, I, I, and in righteousness and in judgment, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. 
and I will say unto them which were not my people, thou art my people, and thou shalt say, Amen. I am a God. So, yeah, he's he's saying, I'm I'm gonna make a new. Okay, a marriage is a covenant, right? Yeah. So you broke my covenant. I divorced you, but I'm going to have mercy on you, and I'm going to woo you back to me, and bring you to me with a new covenant. Amen. A covenant of mercy, and kindness. Yeah. Right. And then he says, "But I had pity on my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen." So, in other words, they profaned my holy name when they were scattered among the heathen. And I don't do this because of your sakes. <laughs> in other words, I don't do this because you you deserve it. Okay. Yeah. It's for my name's sake because I made yeah. the promises. I'm going to keep the promises, right? Mm -hmm. And I will put. Uh, this is really interesting. I will put my spirit in you was foreshadowing of the the pouring out of the Holy Ghost, right? That's right. And cause you to walk in my statutes and you'll keep my judgment and shall dwell in the land which I gave your fathers and you will be my people and I will be our God. Mm. So if the Old Testament prophecies are true, then the descendants of the 10 tribes in Joseph in particular have become many nations. Yes. And they've inherited the birthright promises and would constitute a very large and powerful group of people on the earth. Yes. They would have a powerful nation and a powerful group of powerful nations. They would have prevailed above their enemies in warfare. They would be very wealthy and prosperous mm -hmm. and they will have blessed the world. Yeah. Now, now we get to tracing the lost tribes. So Again, we know who the descendants of Judah are, but they're only one of the tribes of Israel. And, and here is the thing. So all trucks are vehicles, but not all vehicles are trucks. <laughs> so all Jews are Israelites, yeah. but not all Israelites are Jews. That's right. Okay. And that's, that's the thing that, that uh, you know, and I think it's hard for people sometimes when they're, they encounter something that's, you know, not contrary to what they've been ingrained with in reading scriptures, it's hard to comprehend that. But if you look at what we just talked about, it's very obvious in scripture that that has to be true. There are 13 tribes of Israel and Judah isn't even the birthright one. Yes, they're the, the, where the lineage through the Messiah came through which salvation mm -hmm. was brought to mankind, yeah. but they are not the, the one that received the birthright and therefore they, the birthright promises have to be fulfilled by another people. So. The name of Isaac and the name of Israel would be associated with the northern tribes. And so let's look at this. So this all come, these are some books that you can read. Um, uh, what's interesting is Yar Divinity is a Jew. I've, I, I assume you've seen these things yourself, right? I've seen the Stephen Collins book okay. and uh, Judas Scepter, Joseph Booth, right? Yeah, Yar Divinity is a Jew. Okay. And he's a, he became friends with Stephen Collins because he, oh. independent of Stephen Collins, figured out the same thing. Oh, okay. Okay. And That's wrote cool. a whole bunch of books about it. So basically a Jew and a Christian both investigated this and came mm -hmm. to the same conclusions <laughs> about yeah. who the Israelites were. So one of the things Stephen Collins talks about is there was a, the, this Phoenician Empire which was contemporary. What, what he says is it, it, it Phoenician Empire existed at the time of King David and King Solomon. Yeah. And the Greeks said it included the land of Palestine. So one of the things he says has been forgotten from history is that the Phoenician Empire was probably the empire of King David and King Solomon. Yeah. And it ruled the Mediterranean. It basically controlled the Mediterranean because it controlled the gates of Gibraltar. And there are evidence, there's evidence that the Phoenicians had mines in Great Britain. There's evidence of a Phoenician presence in America. Mm -hmm. And there's evidence of a Phoenician presence in Brazil. And according to the Bible, it appears that they sent ships and went and traded with China too. So they were a very mighty nation. That means that even before the kingdom split, there were Israelites who were living in parts of Europe and North Africa, yeah, who had already scattered, and so, and already 
grown beyond the land that God originally gave them. Mm -hmm. And so this is a little thing showing um, pre-captivity. The green arrows show where we know some of these people went and post-captivity yeah. after they were released by the Assyrians where they mm -hmm. went. And you can see where they went is primarily into Europe. Okay, so um, they, they mixed with the Gentiles who were living there in those European countries and became mm -hmm. basically Gentiles, but they were yes. still there. They, yeah. they were still the descendants of the lost tribes. Also, Stephen Collins talks about uh, Parthia, which was uh, an empire that rivaled Rome at the time of the Roman Empire. Um, and it was a great nation that was east of the Euphrates River. And Flavius Josephus, the Jewish historian, said there are but two tribes in Asia and Europe subject to the Romans, which, which while the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates, which is where mm. the, Parth the, the Parthenian Empire is, okay. and are now in tens of numbers and, and not estimated. So basically, um, there were in the time of Jesus, there was an empire that actually had beat Rome. Rome you came after them and they beat them back. You don't ever hear about that. No, you don't hear about that. Because we're descendants of a Roman based. <laughs> you, just look at our government buildings. You can. Right, exactly. <laughs> and these people had some really interesting characteristics. First of all, they had Hebrew names. Yeah. They were ruled over by kings who had names from the lineage of the Bible of King David. Uh, their kings were elected. They made deals by shaking right hands. Hmm. And they had a, a kings over the different areas, and then they had a king that was elected king of the whole land, and he was called the King of Kings. Huh. <laughs> wow. So when... Uh, Stephen R. Coven, in one of his book, he covers this. He says that they were they were also had wise men or magi who were appeared to be of the lineage of Levi. Okay, and mm -hmm. at the time of Christ, uh, the king had killed most of his relatives to keep them from ascending for a throne. So apparently, the magi were looking for a descendant of King David to be the king of kings over the Parthenian Empire. And he said they didn't travel in small groups. They traveled with thousands of soldiers and what they would have gone to. First of all, the, Rome was trying to keep peace with Parthia. So basically, yeah. if, a, if an entourage of a couple of thousand uh, armed men with some uh, wise men and king from this king came looking for the king of kings, it would have scared everybody. Tro yeah. No wonder Herod was greatly troubled. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> no, no. And they probably brought a lot of money with them too, right? So that's interesting. Now, um, since there are no vowels in Hebrew, okay, mm -hmm. Isaac is SK, SK or SC. Yeah. So the people who were living around that region were known as the Saka. Sase or Scythians is what we know them in the history books. Okay. And Scythian derives from Samaria, which derives from Samaria, which means that these were the Sumerians who were living Lieberman's. in that part of the world. Okay. <laughs> yep. So already you see the going of the names and them being altered or changed yeah. to, to uh, reflect the people. So right. the Sassi left the Orient Black Sea region, went northward, and became the Saxons. There you go. <laughs> Isaac's sons. Isaac's sons. Isaac's sons. Yep. And here's the interesting thing. I got this from one of these books. Um, Thomas Jefferson found out about this. The this, this Saxons considered themselves free men. They elected representatives to govern groups of 10 people, 50 people, 100 people, and 1,000 people. Hmm. That's Old Testament the way Moses laid out the, the judges, right? Yeah. So 
Each group of 10 families erected a leader for the 10 families every year. And the, that was a judge. He was to settle the disputes among those families. Okay. Okay, and then you had a captain over the 50s who if mm -hmm. you had a problem that couldn't be settled by the lesser judges, you went to the higher judge. Okay, and then, so the three, the one over the 100 and the two over the 50s made a presiding body of three over okay. the family of 100. And that was known as a ward or a township. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then the group leader of the thousand, which was, you know, 10 of these hundred groups was known as an Earl and his assistant mm -hmm. was, and the, and the land was known as a Shire yeah. and his assistant who helped enforce the law was the Shire reef, mm -hmm. which is where we get the name sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And the purpose of the law was to create restitution for the victim, which is what you also see in the Mosaic law. The purpose yeah. of the law is not to rule people. It's when someone wrongs someone else, you have to uh, hear the case and cause them to make restitution to the person who they mm -hmm. have wronged, the victim of the yeah. crime. That's the essence of what eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth means, is that you have to do yeah. something that compensates for the loss you caused for someone else. Yeah. It doesn't mean that if you poke someone's eye out that you get your <laughs> eye out poked. It means that you have to compensate them for the value of the loss of the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Equal value. So when Christianity was brought to them, they saw in the Old Testament this rule of law and they said, wow, that's interesting. That's how we govern ourselves. They totally forgotten where they got this. Yeah. This is the Saxons. So they still carried yeah. with them this form of government that they had and these ideas that they had. And that, by the way, is where all of the ideas of common law in England arose, which eventually became the ideas for the founding of the government in America. That's and if right. you look at the way we set up our system in America, you have towns, right? Yep. And you have counties and yep. states. And so you, you go from mm -hmm. a, a layered organizational structure, right? Ye you have lower courts and yeah. higher courts. Higher courts, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of the remnants of these yeah. ideas. We, 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 we never fully implement them because we don't have a restitution based legal system. Yeah. But it's still, you can see that. Now, the tribe of Dan is an interesting one. The, That's for sure. <laughs> the, the promise made of Dan was Dan shall judge his people. And as one of the yeah. tribes of Israel, Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path. Dan is lion's whelp and he shall leap. In other words, move on. So what I read is in the in the Bible, everywhere where the Danites moved, mm -hmm. they named the place Dan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all through parts of Europe. <laughs> so everywhere in Europe where the tribe of Dan slithered along in its migrations, mm -hmm. you have Dan, Dun, Din, Don, Den. Dan, you be? Yeah, the Danube, Scandinavia, yep. Danish, Denmark, London, yep. et cetera. All <laughs> this trail <laughs> yeah. following the migration of Dan, whose symbol was an eagle. Yeah. Interesting. And also they were shipbuilders. <laughs> and this is actually the some of the uh, traditional um, mm -hmm. symbols of these nations. I found this. This was really interesting. So. Um, Look at the Manasseh symbols, the olive branch and the arrows. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And also the plant by the tree. Yeah. Ephraim, the unicorn and the bull, mm -hmm. right? That's right? Judah, the lion, David, the harp, you know. Anyway, so Benjamin, the wolf. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that you see some of these symbols in some of the symbols of European nations and we modern do. nations? Yeah, we, we do. We do, and even on some of our money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we do. So, um, so again, the, this is reflecting the organization of this, which goes back to Deuteronomy, where you take wise men, you put them as captains, the laws as well as uh, the election of leaders was done by the common consent of the people and authority um, was only given to chieftain in times of war. The rest of the time, they just had to judge between the mm -hmm. people. They, were, yeah. they didn't actually rule over the people. They just judged the disputes of the people. 
So that there you have what I was telling you before. Mm -hmm. 50 families was a village, 100 was a, a ward or township, and the earldom, Sharif, and so forth. So let's now go to the Old and New Covenant. Deuteronomy. This, this was something, when I understood this, I just, it blew me away. After Moses recites the law and has the people covenant that they'll obey it, he says that thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God into his oath, which the Lord maketh thee with this day, that he may establish thee today for his people unto himself, that he may be unto thee a God as he saith sin unto them and sworn to thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Neither with you do only do I make this covenant an oath, but with him that standeth here with us before the Lord our God, and also with him who is not here with us this day. In other words, for the descendants. Mm -hmm. So the blessing, then he iterates these blessings. You, you obey these laws, you'll become the greatest nation on earth. You'll have material wealth. You'll have good health. Your enemies won't be able to come against you. Your crops will grow because you'll have good rain and temperate weather, and you'll be so rich that you'll loan on money to other nations and you won't borrow from them. Yeah. Then you disobey these laws, you'll be cursed with <coughs> diseases, plagues, famines, mm -hmm. you'll become weak and vulnerable, your enemies will come against you, dispossess you from your land, your numbers will be reduced, you'll wind up scattered among the nations, homeless and poor. And of course, the final thing is you're gonna be scattered among the nations, which happened. Finally, they became scattered among yeah. the nations, right? Now, mm -hmm. here's the part that blew me away when I read this and I'm going like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon you. Mm -hmm. So you've been blessed and then you've been cursed and now you find yourself scattered among the nations whither the Lord thy God has delivered thee. And you shall return unto the Lord your God and shall obey his voice with all that I shall command you this day. Then the Lord will turn your captivity. Okay? Mm -hmm. And shall have compassion on thee and will gather thee from the nations whither I have scattered thee. Yep. Now, uh, when I had I had chills when I when I understood this you know none of those European people who all became known as the Christian nations right because the Apostles yeah. went out and what nations adopted Christianity mm -hmm. the European nations why yeah because they were the descendants of the lost tribes right except for one problem mm -hmm. they didn't have access to the scriptures anything yeah. right until what happened till two the Gutenberg two, press <laughs> yeah the printing press and Martin Luther right mm -hmm, and the Protestant right. Revolution yeah. and suddenly they could read the scriptures mm -hmm. and then wait a second this what we're reading in this book doesn't match what we're being taught yeah yeah okay and they find and, out they find out who God really is right and they started to just turn their hearts to God and they, they, mm, yes. they and and at first there was a battle there were there were mm -hmm. so many of them that were burned at the stake and and whatever but just because they they went against the Spanish Inquisition yeah uh, all of this stuff all that okay mm -hmm. so God had compassion on them and what did he do their branches ran over the wall to a new country Yep. where he delivered them from captivity yeah because they tried to obey his law yeah. and where where was the primary that you you realize that the the the, the two the, two of the primary sources for the form of government that was created here in america were one native american law and two biblical yes. law that's right that's right those two together no. So if we believe in the Book of Mormon, that those Native Americans are also Israelites and carry the vestiges of those principles mm -hmm. of freedom that the same that the Anglo-Saxons had, then we understood that they were turning again to the principles of law that were laid down. That's right. Okay. And rule of law. The rule of law, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and because they sought God, he had compassion on them,
delivered them from captivity and mm -hmm. gathered them out of the nations. From all nations, from all nations they were scattered to. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you start to see this, you're going like, wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is where it begins to be more and more obvious to me because you're looking at a where on the earth uh, has the Lord been gathering people from every nation, you know, and so that becomes a clue. Yes, it does. And then he says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and also with the house yeah. of Judah. And notice again, he separates them, right? There are two different peoples. Yeah. <laughs> Not according to the covenant That's I made right. with their fathers in the day that I took them out uh, by the hand to bring them out of Egypt, which covenant they break, although I was husband. So there we have the husband analogy and the getting divorced <laughs> and all that stuff. But this is yep. the covenant I will make. <clears throat> I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. Mm. Yeah. And will be their God and they shall be my people. That's the covenant. Beautiful. That's the new covenant. Yeah, when we receive, is. when we turn and we accept Christ and we're born of his spirit and he bring, puts our, his spirit in our hearts, he yeah. writes his law in our hearts. Hmm. That's the new covenant God has made with the house of Israel. And everyone who lets God write his law on their hearts yeah. is re-entering into the covenant relationship with God Right. to be his people to be his yeah. people his covenant people be restored again to restore and so this has been going on for quite some time hasn't it yes it has and like you said it's not some little our little church or something this is a big picture of way way bigger than <laughs> way bigger than that <laughs> yeah for lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again, which actually really would be more correctly translated, turn around the captivity mm. of the people of Israel and Judah. And he has turned around the captivity of the people, both Israel and Judah, and will yeah. cause them to return to the land which I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, here's the key where, where, where I had to get that understanding, where, I, where God had to explain to me about the promise that Isaac made, I mean, that... Um, Israel made to Joseph that mm -hmm. Israel had been promised a land of the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'd been promised that there would be a new country that his descendants would inherit. And he gave that to the tribe of Joseph. Yeah. So the land that the Jews went back to was the land of their original inheritance. But the land that Ephraim and Joseph gathered to was the was the blessing that has prevailed above the blessings of thy fathers unto the utmost bound of the everlasting yeah. hills. And so I put beyond that, what was beyond, beyond what was originally given. Yeah, beyond what was originally given. Yeah, and they shall serve. Okay, and I will break his yoke off their neck and will burst the bonds. Okay, so again, there is the thing. I'm going to make them a free people. Mm -hmm. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, who shall I raise up unto them. Now, this David king yeah. is again referring to Christ. Do you yeah. know that, that you won't read this in the history books, but do you know one of the flags was carried in the Revolutionary War and one of the slogans? No king but Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> no king but yeah, Jesus. Yeah, you don't hear about that one either. No, you don't school. hear about that. <laughs> okay. So who was the king of this land? Jesus. Yeah, that's right. It's his promised okay. land. And at the same time, saith the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel. Okay. And yeah. the Lord saith, the people that were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. This land was a wilderness, right? They found, mm -hmm. they, they came over here with nothing into the wilderness yeah. and God gave them grace. And, and the pilgrims yeah. literally said in their Magna Carta, we're here to found the new Israel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The new Israel. Okay. Yep. And, from, and there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall say, Arise ye and go to the Zion unto the Lord their God. Okay? You know, uh, my, my wife is an immigrant. And I went to uh, her ceremony where she became a U.S. citizen. So all mm -hmm. these people from all these countries. And the judge who was praying wanted every one of them to stand up and say something. So we've listened to everybody tell their story. Yeah. What brought them to this country? 
from all over the world. And I thought, is there any country anywhere in the world that so many people from so many places would be drawn to, to come and want to become citizens of this country? And you know, yeah. this is the interesting thing. You know, most countries are ethnic, right? Yeah. A well, common language, a common people heritage, but you don't become an American because of eth ethnicity. Yeah. You become an American because you, now it's true that there are people who don't realize this in America, but because you <laughs> embrace an idea, yeah. right? It was called the great melting pot. Yes, the great melting pot. So he says, I am, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. So when the Judah largely rejected him, mm -hmm. um, he, he sent, they went to the Gentiles. They went to these other nations, okay? But he, he said he would make them fishers of men. Well, there you have J Jeremiah. I will send forth fishers mm -hmm. for the house of Israel. He's talking about, I will send fishers to find the house of Israel <laughs> and hunters. Yeah. They'll hunt them out of the mountains and blah, blah. In other words, the, the message of Christianity, the message of the gospel was a call for the Israelite people to come back into a new covenant with God. For him yeah. to be their God again and them to be his people. He wooed them back to him with a new covenant. So, Amen. last part, or not maybe next to the last part, I don't remember, but okay. So we talked about the invention of the printing press allowed people to read the Bible. Protestant reformers saw that mm -hmm. it didn't match and they wanted to reform the church. They got fined in prison, tortured, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and um, so, to escape the persecution, to better practice what they believe, they came to America. Right. And here's, here's John Robbins with the pilgrims. So, so are the people of God now to go out of Babylon spiritual to Jerusalem, America. For we are the sons and daughters of Abraham by faith. Mm -hmm. Right? The Mayflower Compact, having undertaken for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. Yeah. We, we enact these laws and ordinances. Jefferson, according to Cleon Skousen in The Majesty of God's Law, when he saw the Anglo-Saxon law, he was like so impressed, he wanted to reform the entire legal system of Virginia to make it a restitution-based <laughs> system like that was found in the mm -hmm. Old Testament, which I think is the one of the imperfections of America is that yeah. we don't have a restitution-based legal system, which mm -hmm. is what would be ideal. A restitution based yeah. legal system means that it's not the government punishing people for crimes. It is judges when people have trespassed against one someone to to right the wrongs and restore peace mm -hmm. and equity to society. It's not about yeah. people being lorded over by a, a legal system. And he realized yeah. that this all came back to the that 30th chapter in Deuteronomy that the blessings of God were be extended to those who followed God's law. He want, they wanted to follow God's law so that they could get the blessings that had been promised to nations mm -hmm. who would follow God's law. Yeah. So the statues given to Moses, he said, the, 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 there was some puzzling thing, like how did that work? You know, how did the judges operate? How did, there were a lot of things they didn't, you know, that weren't clear to them about how that had worked. And they were trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to make it work again. Um, this was a Christian leader in the revolution. God brought his little flock thither and placed it in the wilderness. Yeah. There's, there, there you, I mean, this is like Old Testament prophecy. They're, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> he brought them to the wilderness, Lord, commencing here the glorious work of salvation. This great continent is soon to be filled with the praise and glory of the millennium. But here is the yeah. seed from which this last harvest is to spring. Amen. Yeah. He that scattered Israel shall gather him and he keep him as a shepherd of the flock for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the power of him who is stronger than him. Yeah. And then you read this thing, Continental Congress. 
America without arms, ammunition, discipline, revenue, government, or ally with staff and sling, dared in the name of the Lord a gigantic adversity. Because you have to think about it. England was the most powerful nation in <laughs> oh, the yeah. world at the this time. Yeah. They were a superpower. Mm -hmm. And so they weren't delivered by their military might. They were yeah. delivered because they trusted in God. Absolutely. And in fact, you know, something that's interesting to me t is the Book of Mormon it prophesies about a nation being built here on the land of promise that would become the most powerful nation that no other nation could subdue it. Right. Right. And so the most powerful nation. Think about the context in which that was written. Joseph Smith could not have ever have foreseen that because America was not the most powerful nation. It wasn't even in the top 10. It wasn't even no, in the top and, 20. And not only that, I mean, there were still a lot of European nations who thought it was a foolish experiment was going to fail. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, 1828, <laughs> how, how far is that removed from 1812? Right. Not, not very far. And what, what happened in 1812? We were invaded once again by British armies and our capital burned, you know. <laughs> Right, so, exactly. You know, and it really wouldn't be until the 1950s, once after World War II and with the atomic bomb, and then the rush of financial power that came with it. It wasn't until the 1950s that we, that that was fulfilled. There's no way that Joseph Smith, yeah. you know, thought to write that or would have imagined that, that of America without the, the Lord having done it. So he didn't write that book. It was, it was a true prophecy written in that record. Yeah. And... You know, when you kind of look at this, what I've come to understand is Ephraim was the comp was the, the British Empire, which was a company of nations, the British Commonwealth, yes. and basically yeah. they rose to power and they were they had colonies all over the world. I mean, think about that's right. Every how does one little nation on the Isle of the Sea that Isaiah mm -hmm. talks about listen to Isles of the Sea? Okay, yeah. how did they possess all the gates of their enemies? The Suez Canal, the Cape Horn going around Africa, mm -hmm. the yep. you know India, China, uh, Australia, all of this huge you know thing. How did how did that happen? Because there's right. but but you know they brought. Okay, we, we can criticize that there was it was not perfect. I mean, because there were things that were were bad about some of those things. Happening. Oh yeah, but all in all, it raised the level of everything on the earth because yes, it, 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 who Technology. ended who ended slavery? The, yeah, the, the British the, Empire. The British Empire ended slavery. Yeah. Okay. British Empire laid the foundation for the concepts that America then took and fully had, you know embraced and, and tried to put even in greater practice so i think advancements in technology and yeah, uh, and all and, and the great wealth you know in fact i i've got a guy working on a little book because he's point he was pointing out to me where is almost all of the technological advancement that has blessed the yeah. world come from it's come from america absolutely the light bulb the the airplanes, the, the mm -hmm. telephone system, the every, every, everything, yeah. the whole world has been elevated by Ephraim and Manasseh, by the you descendants know, of Ephraim and Manasseh. That, and well, not only where, where, where did the message of Christianity spread originally mm -hmm. from the British Empire, and then now, what nation sends more Christian missionaries to the world right. than any other? It's America. Yeah. You know, Hosea uh, 12, 12, 1 says that Ephraim will follow after the east wind. And so if you follow the east wind and you start in Israel and, and up in the, the northern countries and you disperse and you follow the east wind, you're going to follow up through Europe and you're going to keep going west because the east blows you, the east yeah. wind blows you westward. And then you're going to cross the sea to, uh, to uh, England. Okay, and then if you keep following the east wind after that, you come to America, right. which is what, what happened. But, you know, it's interesting. The, when you look at the prophecies about Ephraim, the powerful, powerful prophecies of that, um, so, and, and, the, and the bountiful and the plentifulness of it, the, the double portion and all this, I mean, you look at what, Eph what uh, England became. It, be, it said that the sun never never set on the, on British, the British Empire. Empire. Yeah. 
And yeah, and it was, and then when the Great Reformation came against against the Catholic Church, it was in England. Yes, they rebelled, and then the that ushered the, in the uh, whole ability the church. of church. Protestantism and the and the ability for people yeah. to start worshiping according to their conscience. Yes, it, they stood up against it, and then uh, Rome sent, or the, the the Pope sent the Inquisition, and the Inquisition was on the Spanish Armada, which is the most powerful uh, naval fleet at that time, and they were going to go, and they were going to bring the Inquisition into England, and they were going to subject everybody to that, and you know what happened? This tremendous storm arose, and they some of their ships were caught on fire, but a bunch of them were just thrown into the rocks on England's coast and uh, and destroyed. I mean, basically, the armada was almost completely wiped out, the most powerful armada on Earth. And when this happened, the Pope himself said, this could only have been God. <laughs> God was against us, you know? Yeah, and and again, when England then began, you know, as, as people began to go to America, you'll see a transfer, don't you? See a, I yeah. see this transfer of that power. I see the transfer of those blessings begin to move over to America, and they begin to leave England in yes. part. Yeah, and and also, if you look, you know, if you really read about the Revolutionary War, it was miracles that delivered. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, it, it literally was just miracle after miracle after miracle yeah. that, that did this. Um, here's an interesting thing I found out. When George Washington was sworn in as president, you know, it wasn't in the Constitution to swear on the Bible. He brought a Bible. Yeah. With him. He opened it up. He yeah. laid it on Genesis 49, which is the promises of the last tribes, including the promises made to Joseph. That's interesting. So... This takes us to the scriptures where we can look a little bit at some of the prophecies. Mm -hmm. Messages of hope to Latter-day Israel. Because one of the things that I, I'm increasingly finding weighing on my spirit with God is that there is this kind of thing in religiosity of, of this punishing, judgmental, angry God that you know yeah. we're, we're trying to escape. Yeah. And that's not the gospel. Gospel is good news. Gospel is a message of hope. Gospel is a message that God is in charge, that yeah, there will be difficulties in this life. This life is, yeah. this world still is largely ruled by Lucifer and his followers, but yeah. his, but the message is God's going to eventually overthrow all that. Mm -hmm. It will be overthrown and his kingdom will prevail upon the earth. And this is really found when you start reading these passages in the Bible. This is the one that you had mentioned in your thing about the 1111, you know. Mm -hmm. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord God will set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people. And he shall set up an ensign to the nations and shall assemble the, and this is interesting, the outcasts of Israel. Yeah. They're cast out and the dispersed of Judah. Different. Mm -hmm. Judah was dispersed, Israel was outcast from the four corners of the east. And then he says that the envy of Ephraim will depart and the adversaries oh, yeah. of Judah will be cut off and Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah mm -hmm. shall not vex Ephraim. Now it's interesting that, you know, historically, who has been the greatest ally of Israel? America. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah. Ephraim and Judah have become largely allies. Yeah, we made up. We made up. We've had a we've had thousands of years of, of uh, contention between the north the north and the south between Israel and Judah, and here we are now. We're allies. Yeah, and it's interesting. I've heard these uh, some uh, Christian ministers who have the spirit of prophecy, and they will talk about America and Israel, America and Israel, America and Israel. Mm -hmm. And if they really understood what they were saying, they're really saying Israel and Judah, Ephraim yeah. and Judah. Ephraim, they're, they're prophesying about these two houses, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that God is going to uh, thing. And then this is from uh, Ezekiel. I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they have gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. 
and one king shall be mm. king over to them all, and they shall no more be two nations. And David, my servant, will be king over them, and they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes, and they shall dwell in the land that I gave to who? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yes. Not the land I gave to Abraham and Isaac. The land no. I gave to Jacob. Yeah. Right. I, I, she, like I said, once I started to see this, it was like just yeah. boom, 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 boom. All these things are co coming together. So here is Isaiah addressing the Israelites in the last days. But thou Israel art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Mm -hmm. Thou who I have taken from the ends of the earth. And called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and I will not cast thee away. I will not cast thee away. We yeah. may go through difficulties. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if we, if we are, you know, those of us who stay, uh, you know, true to Christ and, and whatever, we are not going to be cast away. We will prevail. Fear thou not. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, and I will uphold thee by the right hand of my righteousness. There's, I, you know, there's Amen. a hymn about that. You know, fear mm -hmm. not, I am with thee. Oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still be the aid. I used to sing that when I was having <laughs> troubles when I was younger. Yeah. Um, Behold, all mm -hmm. they that are incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They are shall be as nothing. They that strive against thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even they that contended with thee, they shall. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. For not, for the Lord I will hold thee by the right hand and say unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. It's not, not a very flattering. <laughs> 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 you men of Israel, I am the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Fear not, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee back by thy name and thou art mm -hmm. mine when thou passest through the waters i will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame uh, kindle thee for i am the lord thy god the holy one of israel thy savior yeah since thou wast prescient in my sight thou and this is all this this is all isaiah addressing israel in the last days so if we have accepted Christ and allowed him to write our law, his law in our hearts, Amen. we're Israel. These promises pertain yeah. to us. He is addressing us. And, 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 and we can like lay hold on these promises, you know? Amen. Everyone that is called by my name. What is, what is his name now? Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. All of us who have accepted the covenant of Christ, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. I have made him. Okay? Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I pour out my spirit on thy seed and blessing upon thy offspring. Mm. One shall say, I am the Lord's. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another will subscribe unto the hand of the Lord and surname himself with the name of Israel. So saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. And I, who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order before me since I appointed the ancient people. So that, I, what... I started to understand as I read Isaiah, as God says, you didn't know you were fulfilling my promises. <laughs> yeah. Because you yep. didn't know who you were. And the reason mm -hmm. why you did this this way is because you'd say, well, my idol did it. But I wanted <laughs> you to understand that I did it. <laughs> I'm God. I knew from the beginning what mm -hmm. would happen. And I yeah. had the plan. And you, I am fulfilling right. my words. And I am fulfilling the promises I made to my people. Mm -hmm. And if you start to understand I'm filling, then you understand it's me that did it. You guys didn't do it. I yeah. did it. Because you weren't worthy of it. <laughs> but I made it happen. Yeah. And therefore, you can what? Trust in me. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning. I... I started to have a faith I had never experienced before when I started yeah. to see how God had 
was fulfilling promises he made mm -hmm. thousands of years ago, and they were playing out in modern society. And I'm yeah. going, God keeps his word. Yeah. And this is not about our glory or thinking no. of ourselves or something that we shouldn't think of ourselves. This is glorious, though. It is his glory. You know, the Book of Mormon, the Lord says that the gathering of Israel, which is the, the lost tribes, is said is the work of the Father. And yeah. he says that he will he will do it himself uh, so that we'll know that he's God. And it's interesting, the things that are attached to that, this gathering together of the lost tribes out of, out of all the nations to one place. And he says, basically, that the whole world will be astonished by it because he, and he will accomplish it before they know what's going on. It's already been done. <laughs> and, you know, it's just when I read those things, I'm like, this is this is what has happened. You know, we have words for it in our history, the great melting well, pot, the, you and, know, the and, so on and so on. And you're like, this is a fulfillment of scriptures. Yeah. You know? And we're, if you go back to this one, we're right now in a time mm -hmm. when there's fires and floods and, and, and the, there's chaos in the world around us. But he's telling us, you, you stick with me, I'll walk you through it. You don't mm -hmm. have to be afraid. You'll come out victorious, you know? Yeah. Amen. I will pour my water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Okay. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Yeah. Amen. I will blot it, have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> right? Amen. Amen. Thank the good okay. Lord. <laughs> no, no. I have thy sins, uh, I redeem thee. And, and this is all foreshadowing, mm -hmm. you know, what, what would happen with Christ, right? Yeah. Sing, O heavens, you know. Now, this is really interesting. And I, I, I kind of want to... Yeah. Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim. By the way, the, I, I, one of the things, I think yeah. you mentioned it, that... Ephraim had tended to have a problem with uh, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> well, pride. It, yeah, pr pride. But also, I don't. Maybe it was somebody else who said Ephraim had a problem I, with alcohol. I said, I said he talks about the mean drunkards, but I think they were drunk on their pride. Is Probably what it is. Yeah. yeah. So he says their glorious beauty is a fading flower. Okay. In other words, they. Mm -hmm. They. Now I think. I think this is a prophecy that's specifically addressing the time that we're living in. Mm -hmm. The glorious beauty is a fading flower on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. They are, are intoxicated yeah. with the ways of the world. The Lord has a mighty and strong one who is a tempest of hell and a destroying storm and a flood of mighty waters overflowing. There's the overflowing waters, the storm, the tempest shall cast down to the earth the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim. That is also in the Book of Mormon, that, that if the Gentiles who don't yeah. repent will be cast down, right? That's right. And the glorious beauty, which is the head of the fat valley, shall be a fading flower, mm -hmm. and as the hasty fruit before the summer. Uh, now, I found out hasty fruit is the fruit that ripens before the general crop. Yeah. So, so it's, it's like the first fruits. Okay. Okay. So when, when you see the first fruit that's ripe, you grab it and eat it really quickly because mm -hmm. later the bounties of the full harvest is coming in. So yeah. what has transpired up to date with the descendants of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, has been a, a, a glorious in a way, mm -hmm. but it's a fading flower and it was a hasty first fruit. Yeah. It isn't the fullness of what's about to happen because God is going to do something that's way bigger than what he's already done and yeah. way more miraculous than what he's already done way beyond <laughs> what happened with our founding fathers with being delivered out of the hands of of uh england and england being delivered from the spanish mm -hmm. armada yeah in that day shall the lord of hosts be for a crown of glory for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people the ones who are left after this time of judgment. A remnant. And, 
And they shall be for a spirit of judgment that him that, uh, for judgment in him that sitteth in judgment and for the strength to them that turn the battle at the gate. So in other words, mm-hmm. but the this is also allusion to what something happened in Isaiah mm-hmm. because Judah was surrounded, right? And Hezekiah yeah. prayed and said, God, we don't deserve it, but if you know, deliver us from enemies and they were miraculously delivered from the Assyrians. They the battle was mm-hmm. turned at the gate. So even though right now to many people, it seems very bleak. You know, a lot of bad things happening in the world. A lot of, of growing crime, homelessness, all these bad things that are happening. You know, a lot of corruption in our government and so forth. Mm-hmm. But the battle is going to be turned at the gate by the power of God, not by ours. But, he, but and, and the reason why this doesn't pertain to ancient Israel is they didn't turn the battle at the gate. They were overthrown. Yeah. Okay. But the people who are left, the residue of the people, have also erred through wine. And for strong drink, they are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up with wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So in other words, he's, this is again, I think, also mirrors the Book of Mormon passage. Yeah. Even those who are the humble followers of Christ, nevertheless they are led that in many instances they do err because they are taught by the precepts of men. Yeah. This is where I think we need to be humble. All tables are full of vomit and filthiness. Mm-hmm. There, there's no place clean right now to, to hear the maybe the pure word of the Lord, because there's so many conflicting, confusing voices and so much deception, you know, intoxication with with the power and pride and glory and whatever that, that, you know, we need to be humble. We probably are in error about a lot of things. I I know I've been corrected many times by the Lord about my understanding of things. And And it's difficult to get clear of because even though knowing even though there's groups of people now knowing that we are in error knowing that our traditions have led us astray it's hard to really get completely clear of them there even when you think you've gotten rid of some major issues there's still more things unseen that we don't really realize and bottom bottom line is we need his help we do. desperately to, to 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 see clearly yeah we do and this this is about that wine, okay? Yeah. Where Babylon falls, she made all nations drunk with the wine of her fornications, mm-hmm. okay? The inhabitants of the earth have been made to drink of the wine of her fornication. For all nations have drunk the wine of her fornication. Okay, I, I, I know that there are some like um, Christians who think America is Babylon, but I think Babylon is a bigger spiritual concept. It's a, of, yeah. It's 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 something that the, all the kings of the earth have committed fornication with Babylon, yeah, uh, and entered into the ways of Babylon, which, by mm-hmm. the way, is all the whole banking system we live under originated in Babylon. Mm-hmm. The interest, mm-hmm. you know, usury on money, and all this other stuff that is all that, the yeah. whole whole foundation of our entire society. Most most of the laws of civilization as we know it were birthed in Bab- ancient Babylon. Yes. Yeah, so like, we live under a Babylonian society. And Jesus said to yeah. his disciples, I don't want you to be like the Gentiles. Yeah. You don't lord over each other, you know, that way. So going back to Isaiah, wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem. Okay. The scornful men who actually are in charge of the world said, we've made a covenant with death and with hell. We're in agreement. In other words, we're, 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 we're good. Whatever we're doing, we're we're in agreement with Satan and his plan, and we're going to prevail. Whatever. So when the overflowing scourge, when all this bad stuff happens, it won't touch us because yeah. we've hidden ourselves in lies, we've placed our lies our hope, and when falsehoods we have hid ourselves. Boy, mm-hmm. I can see that in the world today, yeah. with the leaders of this world, who've hidden themselves in lies, and you know. Mm-hmm corrupt, yeah. you know, behind the scenes deals and everything. But Isaiah says, your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Now this, I'm, I'm talking about this again as a message of hope for us. Yeah. We don't have to despair. We don't have to be in gloom. We don't have to look at what's happening in the world and think, oh, it's hopeless and blah, 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 and everything's going to be destroyed. And all. No, 
it, it, just like our founding fathers were brought through the fire yeah. and came out victorious, we, if we trust in God, will, will come out victorious. And your agreement with hell shall not stand, and the overflowing scourge shall pass through, and you, then you shall be trotted down by it. The pit shall be filled with them that digged it, I think is in the Book yeah. of Mormon. For the time that goeth forth, it shall take you, by, for by morning, morning shall it pass over day and night, and it shall be a vexation only to hear the report. See, so the, for the bed is shorter than a man can stretch. So in other words, the bed you've made yeah. isn't big enough for you, yeah. and the covering you got for the bed isn't co covering enough to hide you. You're not going to be able to escape. You're going to go down with the mm -hmm. what you've created, you know. And this, I think, is interesting. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Pazerum, and Sheboroth mm -hmm. as in the Valley of Gibeon. Now that's the story where Gideon yeah. is told to overthrow the Philistines, and he keeps mm -hmm. God keeps making his army smaller and smaller and smaller, dwindling right? them down to <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he he has them go into battle in a way that the enemy kills themselves, yeah. and they don't lose a single man. Yeah. So what he's saying is the victory is mm -hmm. going to be as miraculous as that was. Which is what we are told about the victory of Zion is that those who assemble themselves against Zion, it, it, that they will destroy themselves, that they will be caught in their own snares, their own weapons that they have formed will destroy them. Yeah. yeah. So our job is to try to align ourselves with Christ, follow his spirit and, mm -hmm. and be on that. Now, therefore, be not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the consumption, um, Gileadis, uh, cause utter destruction, Lamsa, translation, destruction, judgment, even determined on the whole earth. I think that's a very powerful passage pertaining to what we're going on in our day. And I think this is really interesting to me. For behold, the days come, saith the Lord, it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought the children up yes. of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. Yeah. In other words, we talk about that day, you know, the miraculous yeah. events of the Exodus and blah, 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 and what a mm -hmm. God came forth with might. Somehow, mm -hmm. what's about to happen? So much better. So it's going to bigger. be so much bigger that yeah. it will so overshadow that mm -hmm. that we'll talk about that instead. Yeah, we'll never talk about the past again. Yeah, that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and out of all the nations whither he had given them. In other Amen. words, that, that is going to be so miraculous with the fishers and the hunters and what he's going to do that we'll yeah. look back on it. We'll go, wow. Yep. The restoration of the house of Israel, the, the lost tribes, as it were, that were just scattered into the into the north, they will be brought back. They will be gathered again and restored. And that will be the miraculous event that we all look to. Yeah, and it will be. Uh, but first, okay, this goes back to what I'm talking about, the, the, the trouble we're in. I will recompense their iniquity and sin double because they defiled the land. And I think we have defiled the land. Yeah. Um, the Gentiles will come unto thee from the ends of the earth and say, we've inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Mm. Okay. I will this once cause them to know, I'll cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know my name is the Lord. So in other Amen. words, they'll be delivered. And I want to basically also end with this little, um, Gile Abraham, Abraham Gileadi, I don't know if you heard of him. He was a BYU professor he he did a translation of the book of Isaiah mm -hmm. and he talked about the parallelisms and basically also talked about some of the metaphors and a mountain is also a symbol for a nation so if you read yeah. that read this this way it shall come to pass in the last days that the nation of the Lord's house of Israel mm -hmm. right shall be established at the top or the head of the nations the head of the mountains yeah. And shall be exalted above the hills, the smaller nations, and all nations will flow unto it. And the people will say, come, let us go up to the mountain or the nation of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us in his ways and we walk in his paths. For out of Zion will go forth the law, the right. word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and, and, and they'll beat their swords into plowshares and there won't yeah. be war anymore. Amen. We have a preliminary fulfillment of that but the ultimate fulfillment of that the true harvest 
not mm. the hasty fruit, the, the, the mini harvest beforehand will be miraculous. Yeah. What you're sharing, it's sobering what you've shared at the end here. It's sobering uh, what we're about to go through. Um, but the good news is this. Uh, I used to hate reading the Old Testament prophets way back in the day. Before the Lord gave me this understanding and, and other things that helped me understand it, I, I just saw it as a lot of doom and gloom. But you know, when you just be still and know that He is God, and you and you and He and you go through the Scriptures and let the Holy Spirit walk you through them, you know He talks about the judgments that will come. But it always ends this way. Every time after going through the judgments, He says, "But tell my people, it will be well with them. I will mm -hmm. take care of them. I will, I will keep them. I will, you know." And so, um, you know. I, I believe that we're coming to a point, Nephi and the, and the other Nephites, they knew that these Gentiles, okay, these Gentiles are coming from these nations and they're going to create a mighty nation and they're going to scatter their seed, right? But they didn't know all things. They didn't fully understand. They saw in part, like the Apostle Paul says, we see in part. We don't fully understand all prophecies to the, until they become fulfilled. The right. Lord has to reveal those things. But what they did say is that if the Gentiles would repent, if, then they would be numbered among the house of Israel. We just aren't told how. And I think we're in that time now where what's happening with the scriptures that you just read, that there's basically a, div a dividing line where the Lord is judging who is a Gentile still and who will be known as his the wheat and the tares yes and those are his are then counted as the seed of Israel once more and so you divide out whereas Israel went into the Gentile nations and became as Gentiles intermingled <clears throat> through this process God is going to pull or extract Israel back out from the Gentiles because the the Gentile means godless. It means someone outside the covenant. Right. Right? And so <clears throat> another thing too is um, you know <laughs> I'm, I'm the kind of person that because of the experiences that I've had with the Lord I know that because you make mistakes or because you have some wrong ideas or theology God doesn't stop talking to you and write you off and and that's the end of it. Nope. And, be, and because of that, I don't have a dividing line with Joseph Smith where one day on the day of uh, May 30th of 1830, whatever, suddenly that was the end of it. Everything that Joseph ever said or did was completely to be tossed away. You know, he gave a prophecy that came to pass. There were prophecies that he gave that didn't come to pass. But one that came to pass was that you will not be allowed to pollute the land of Zion. And those who are rebellious against me are not counted as the blood of Ephraim. And they will be run out of the land of Zion. Well, that came to pass. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when they returned after the printing press is destroyed, written in our history on the RLDS history anyway we have that when they returned the pages and the print set that was that was being printed that day when it when the mob came was that very revelation with those very words that the rebellious are not counted as the as the uh, as Ephraim and they will be run out of Zion and they were and so because they polluted Zion um, and and when we talk about polluting Zion, so many people are so hung up. It's all about like sexual sin, but yeah. there's so much bigger picture because the the real sin is to be lifted up in pride mm -hmm. and and to create iniquity, which is inequality among the people. Mm. 
where the where the people are no longer where there's higher yeah. ups and lowers, where there's richer and there's poorer, where there's where where we're not truly brothers and sisters. In Which God. was always that was always the beginning of the end for the Nephites. Yes. Every time their downfall it started with the riches and inequality between being, them. Yeah, and being puffed up in our learning and mm -hmm. puffed up in our riches and puffed up in in whatever we think makes yeah. us better than other people. Yeah. That's where the danger comes in because we no longer see everybody as our brothers and sisters. Yeah. And um, I, I I wanted to just tell you. I didn't want to tell it before the presentation because I, I want to tell you how this was originally shown to me. I was at a conference for a, a company I was working with and a woman had just, uh, it was in Washington, D.C. And a woman who had been a former Mrs. America had given a talk and she sang America the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, it, and she got to the verse, oh, beautiful for patriots dream that sees beyond the years Thine alabaster cities gleam, mm. undimmed by human tears. And I, wow. and it was, and I, and I was carried away as a full vision of the millennium. That this was like the vision of the of the destiny of America. Was to become yeah. a land of of c cities undimmed by human tears, mm. and and tears started to roll down my eyes, and I go, God, you know the. She's singing about my country. This is not church. Why is the spirit <laughs> like pouring through me? He says because yeah. he says because America is Israel in the last yeah. days. And I went what? Yeah. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I go. He says I'll prove it to you. Prove it to you. And he yeah. said go go to your room and get a Bible. So I went yeah. to my room, pulled out the Gideon Bible in the in the in the room. He says turn to Ezekiel chapter thirty eight. Mm -hmm. Gog and Magog. And, and he starts like, okay, it's the, he, the Gog and Magog come against the land which has been brought back by the sword. And God said, in other words, this land was redeemed by the sword, redeemed by a war. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the people have been gathered out from the nations, okay? And they dwell in peace and safety. He says the people yeah. in 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 the Israel do not dwell in peace and safety without wars and walls and gates. No. Okay. Uh, they don't dwell in unwalled villagers. <laughs> in other words, villages mm -hmm. with no. His, he, yeah. and, and he went through and just showed me this is describing America. Yeah. And he says besides, Absolutely. and then then this was what the Spirit said. You know that Israel is not Judah. Yeah. Because That's they come right. against the mountains of Israel. Yeah. Not against the mountains of Judah. That's right. And that war is is basically it says that God comes and defends us. Mm -hmm. God God stretches to, to to deliver his people and and there there there's the central part of Isaiah which is the again the historical chapters where where uh you know Assyria comes against the Jerusalem and besieges it and God miraculously delivers them. Mm -hmm. That's what he understood. But he's going to miraculously deliver us. We're, we're yeah. going to be punished as a nation because of the things we've done wrong. But God is going to miraculously deliver us. And I mean, there's kind of an apocryphal thing where um, George Washington is said to have had three visions. You know, yeah. the, the Revolutionary War and then the Civil War. And then this third th attack, which comes from a dragon coming out of the east which sounds like china and a black cloud coming out of africa and these different things all coming coming against america and says this third one will be the worst but this light comes down out of the heavens and it disperses all the darkness and the yeah. people become unified and it's never again to be mm -hmm. and, and i and i believe that's the time that we're you know coming into where yeah we're going to have some difficult times but ultimately god's God, God wins. <laughs> That's the, the point. The good news yeah. is God wins, and Amen. we just need to to stay on the try to be on the right team by staying humble and yes, and seeking to follow His Spirit. Well, and uh, you know, I'd like to talk just a moment here about Ephraim because the thing is, you have these great promises and covenants being made uh, in the Scriptures, and you you have the prophets all speaking of it. 
Okay, you even have the psalm. Even in Psalms, it says, "Oh God, stir up your strength with Ephraim and Manasseh, that you may save us." And so there's these great prophecies, and yet here we are, mysteriously, in the last days, and no one, no, who's talking about Ephraim? Where is he? Where should he be? Well, we know because we're Book of Mormon believers. We know where Manasseh is, right? Mm -hmm. It's right here. So where should Manasseh? Where should Ephraim be? He should be with his brother Manasseh, right? Right. Because if you bring Ephraim and Manasseh together, what do you have? It's it's Joseph. Right. Okay. And what did Joseph was a type and shadow? Joseph. It was to Joseph that that Israel or his family gathered. Right. They gathered to a place of refuge, mm -hmm. a shelter for a seven-year famine. We talk about a seven-year tribulation and things like this, you know. Um, <laughs> and so they gathered to Joseph. And so if the gathering is here, if Manasseh is here, that means Ephraim is here. Yes. And another thing, too, that I thought was interesting is years ago, as I was starting to explore this, this thought came out of nowhere. And this is usually how God works with me. Mm -hmm. Just this thought gets implanted in my head that's from somewhere strange. And then I have to go search it out and see if this is true. That is exactly what happens to me, by the way. Yes. This is how he <laughs> works with me. Okay. And so I'm minding my own business, not even thinking about this. And out of the blue, this thought comes. And the thought is, go and look at how the tribes were arranged around the tabernacle in the wilderness to see where they would be in the last days. And I thought, that's a crazy thought. That is an interesting thought. Wow. So here, so here's, where, here's what you find out. Manasseh and Ephraim are on the west side of the tabernacle. Okay. They're in the west. Okay. All right. Judah is in the east. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's not it's not proof it's just very interesting yes it's interesting and, and it is certainly another little piece of the clue and evidence but what what the main thing about this is and for me and it's it's like he said it's not that people have to agree with us and if you don't you know yeah think yeah. we're right that's fine i i've not no problem with me uh god's told me many things and i go like what and then i've had just taken me several years <laughs> to finally get the evidence to yeah. what he said was right but but what it is is this like i said the reason why i think this is so valuable is mm -hmm. I can read these passages and know that if I have made that covenant with Christ, yeah. I am adopted into the house of Israel. That's right. And since I am part of that lineage of coming down as the, the Gentiles who were, mm -hmm. the, Ephraim, the, the Israelites who were scattered among Gentiles, yeah. those promises pertain to me. And I can lay hold on them in faith and trust right. that God can walk me through the fire. He can walk me through the rivers. He can, Amen. He can take me through the difficulties. He, he can uphold my spirit if I build on the rock Amen. That, that is faith in him. And this has greatly strengthened my faith. That is yeah. the value of it for me, is that it strengthened my faith because it tells me yeah. God knows what he is doing. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's that's why I wanted that's why I wanted us to have this opportunity to share this because it does fill me with hope. Um it's not a pride or ego thing. And that I that was the problem. It's always been pride is a problem with Ephraim. And I believe that unfortunately happened in the early church, I think. They yeah. they for, they forgot about Manasseh. They forgot about Manasseh and suddenly it was all about Ephraim and all things we're gonna do. Well, well guess what? Ephraim's not gonna do <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, um, he's stubborn. So, in, fa Ephraim's in, fact, stubborn. in fact, there's a scripture in the prophets that I'm going to put on the screen after we edit this. But in there, it's it talks about how Ephraim has been like a bull, but he but he needs to be an ox. Yeah. And the whole teaching of what an ox is, the ox has all the power of the bull, but he's been castrated. <laughs> and when he gets castrated, he serves his master. 
Instead of being stubborn and independent and, and angry and yeah, like, which is a circumcision of the heart. Yes. And so God has made Ephraim to be a powerful, powerful ally, and he has a great work to do in the last days. But as long as he walks around like a bull, mm -hmm. uh, he's not going anywhere. He's going to keep getting. Uh, he's going to keep being um, humbled. Right. And so we need to repent of that. That's why the Gentiles have to repent, by the way. Yes. Because he knows that our our predilection for pride and ego. Yeah. You know, amen. <laughs> but <laughs> but for me, I want to share this because for me, it changed my whole direction and how I looked at things as far as worrying about the church or worrying about this or worrying. When I realized how much bigger of a picture of what God's plan is, it it made all the other things so trivial because best case scenario, even if you took the RLDS, LDS, Temple Lot Church, Strangites, I don't care who you put, put all those people together. At best, at best, all we could say is that we're one part of one tribe out of how many? And so, <laughs> and this is a group effort. It's the whole house of Israel. Right. And, and, and when, what Joseph was told when, when he was shown the plates, but he couldn't get them yet, Oliver Cowdery's testimony that Joseph Smith told him was that the, the angel always told him, your mind must be, you know, your eye must be single to the glory of God and the restoration of the house of Israel because this is the entire purpose of this. Mm -hmm. It is the whole purpose of this record coming forward. And so that's got to be our purpose, be because that's his desire, is to restore his people, you know. Right. And if we if we humble ourselves, we get to be a part of that. We get to be part of those people, and that's exciting to me. That's exciting to me too. Yeah, thirteen colonies, thirteen tribes reuniting <laughs> yeah. under one king, yeah. Jesus. There are no king but Jesus. Thirteen uh, arrows. Thirteen by arrows. The way, thirteen all, little, thirteen some... olive branch, olive leaves, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. all. All foreshadowing, because it's it, 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 because it's mm -hmm. leading up to, yeah, the grand culmination, where where God will finally bring Israel back as one nation, oh. and and through them, from that point, yeah. all the world will be converted. Yes, yeah, to beginning with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I thank you, brother, for mm -hmm. coming on and sharing these things. I, I know there's even much more we could even talk about. Oh, I mean, it, I, I just took samplings of passages from yeah. the scriptures. There are so there's a many lot. more. There are so <laughs> yeah. many more. We could, I think we'd come back and do another, another thing we, sometime. You could we'll, just sit there in the whole latter half of Isaiah and just read <laughs> the whole latter half of Isaiah yeah. with this understanding, and, and it would just totally, like, blow your mind. Isaiah you is particularly. Isaiah is particularly powerful in this, and I think that's why the Book of Mormon said, of great value, Isaiah would be to us, to the Gentiles. Why? Who? Why were the Gentiles? What would that matter? He doesn't speak to the Gentiles in, in Isaiah. He speaks to Israel. Well, almost in their the, restoration. Almost the, the the entire latter half. I mean, the the mm -hmm. first half of Isaiah is about how the people will be scattered and blah blah. And everything. Yeah, but almost the entire latter half is how they would be redeemed that's right and how how god would and it's mostly addressed to israel mm -hmm. he addresses judah but mostly he addresses israel and yeah. um and if we now understand this we understand that he's addressing us and we need to really read those words mm -hmm. and read them as yes this is talking about talking to us this is mm -hmm. I, I you know it's a light thing he said to yeah. isaiah that you know you're going to try to speak to the people that you're ministering to now okay mm -hmm. i will give you to be a light to the gentiles to the ends of the earth yeah i i really uh i know that ephraim is a is a double portion that even even above manasseh but manasseh was born first right and i believe manasseh is about to be spiritually born again and manasseh will come rise to power yes after they him. they are the ignition key yes. and when they when they take off ephraim will explode and become yeah. ephraim i believe right now we're we're essentially gentiles but 
We live in a Lord. Gentile government, Gentile economic system, <laughs> Gentile yeah. churches. And Gentile way of thinking. Gentile way of thinking. And we yep. have to, to get repent. In, repent and get into an entirely different mindset than yep. we are now. And that's not easy because we have yep. to give up the false traditions of our fathers, which we've inherited. Surely mm -hmm. our fathers have inherited lies okay? <laughs> and things that yep. were there and there's no profit. And yep. therefore, we have to understand that we've inherited a bunch of lies mm -hmm. that we're drunk with the wine of Babylon yeah. and we've got to really like sober ourselves up and let yeah. Christ teach us how basically by the way if you watch the chosen I love it oh I love yeah. it too because you see the these people as human beings yeah and Jesus is gently leading them from where they are at yeah okay with all their misconceptions and notions and blah mm -hmm. blah blah into mm -hmm. where they need to be and I think it's a perfect uh, analogy of what God has to do with all of us. He has to take yeah. us where we're at and, and, and then he slowly leads us to where he wants us to be. And we just right. have to be humble enough to let him do that. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, brother, for coming on. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. And uh, God bless everyone out there. And until next time.